Hope you guys have enjoyed the previous videos by learning in and out of collection framework. Now it's time to learn about another beautiful concepts and interesting topic in Java, which is multi-threading. I heard from many developers saying that multi-threading is one of the toughest topic in Java. The reason behind that is people think like, okay, it is developed by Oracle Java team where it is core level, the language level, and it is very difficult to understand the concepts, how it is actually working internally. So I have taken the toughest topic and split into multiple videos and want to go in and out of each concepts in multi-threading and I want to make you guys feel comfortable in terms of like before appear for any interview as well as coding and also I will go through with the real-time programming so you guys will understand where we really use multi-threading in our real-time programming in our client place. In this video we are going to learn about what is demand threads in Java and what is the role of demand thread in Java and how to check whether the given thread is demand or not and what is the way that we can make a thread as demon and also I also want to uh, demonstrate this particular concept where by explaining some user story which will make you guys very easy to understand and correlate with Java and then I'm going to uh, tell you guys about some key concepts regarding the demon uh, threads in Java and I'm going to write a program so that you guys can see really understand how the demon thread actually works so without any further delay let's get started here we are going to look into these concepts in uh, demand threads. So basically first thing we are going to see at what is demand thread. So demand thread is nothing but a background executing threads. So let's say you have a multi-threaded environment in your program and uh, not all the threads are like you know really uh, up in the screen or what you are actually working on right. There are some threads which is actually working in the background. So the typical example let's say in any program in any Java program you have a garbage character right. So garbage character is nothing but it's uh, another thread actually. It actually runs in the background to check if any object is uh, not used uh, for a very long time then it is going to get that object and it is going to clean that object right so this actually happens at the JVM level uh, without knowing like our programmer or anyone noticing it right basically the garbage character actually runs at the background and it is actually doing its job so similarly any thread which is actually executing in the background that is called demand threads so what is the purpose of demand thread why do we need a demand threads so let's say you are writing a program and you are executing your logic but what is the need of a garbage character here? So garbage character is actually uh, is required to support our program or support our thread, right? So whenever you write a program, so whatever we write, right? That is actually a main thread, right? The main class is nothing but a main thread. So in order to support the main thread, the garbage character is actually supporting the main thread at the background. So this logic is required whenever we write a program to support our program, these, you know, background threads are very required. So that is why we call the demand threads are actually supporting the main threads or main uh, program or any threads. So basically in order to support the non-demand threads. So they classify into demand threads and non-demand threads. So demand threads means whichever the thread is executing at the background and non-demand threads are nothing but they actually which is executing at our program level. So the purpose of demand threads is to support the non-demand threads. Now let's see what is the way that we can check whether the given thread is a demand or not. So Oracle team provided a couple of methods. One is to check whether the given thread is demand or not. So under the thread class we have is demand. So is demand is a boolean value. It is going to return. So if it is written true, it means that particular thread is a demand. If it returns false, that particular thread is non non demand thread. Okay. And if I want to make some change, if I want to make a demand thread to non demand or non demand to demand, then there is a way. There is a, a set method set demand of boolean. So if you give true, it means like you are making that particular uh, thread as demand. If you make it false, it means like the particular demand thread as a uh, non demand thread. So now I want to explain this demand thread uh, story uh, with uh, one simple example. Let's say uh, in a courier office, right? Uh, as we discussed in previous examples where we are talking about the multi-threading uh, concepts with the help of uh, ordering an order in Amazon and getting the uh, parcels from the courier office, right? So let me uh, talk about the similar one. Uh, let's say uh, in a courier office, let's say you are uh, the main thread, you are actually placed an order in Amazon and you are going to access your object. So that object should be ready in that courier office, right? Meaning that parcel should be ready in the courier office. but uh, in order to make that uh, object or in order to make that parcel uh, readily available in the courier office so there will be some supporting guys who will be uh, working in the background office or back office of courier office what they do is like whatever the order they receive it they will make uh, sorting those orders and then uh, parcels and then they will place accordingly right so that like it can be easily accessible similarly in java the jvm actually has some list of some helper guys right, or helper uh, uh, you know uh, executing threads like a uh, background executing threads which actually supports the main thread or main program. So this is how actually it relates with, uh, you know, courier office helper guys with 
uh, JVM uh, demo threads. So whenever anyone asks about demo threads, just think about the helper guys in the query office. That's it. You will easily get the concept and you can able to deliver uh, the actual concept in front of anyone in your program. So what happens is demo threads actually uh, is actually working in the background. So because of that, it has a priority one. Always the least priority is assigned for uh, demo threads. So let's say uh, demo thread is having a priority of one. Let's say you are writing your program and let's say your program is executing for some time and it got stuck. Then what has to do is let's say garbage character has to go and check if there is any objects are not used and its purpose is to go and clean those non-used objects, isn't it? So JVM has to assign the garbage character uh, thread with higher priority because let's say the program which you're writing, right? So that program particular program is executed by main thread. So main thread is having the priority of five. So, but the demo thread is having a priority of one. So definitely this won't actually going to execute. So it's JVM's duty is going and making the change of the priority of demo thread from one to 10 so that the demo thread will make a precedence and it is going to execute and it is going to the garbage character is going to look for any unused objects and it is going to clean it so that it is available for uh, the main thread to proceed further. So after that, once the main thread gets started, once the demo thread gets completed job, then JVM is going to again going to decrease its priority back to one. So this is how the priority of the demand threads is keep changing by JVM. This is mainly used whenever there is a problem in actual program and demand threads is going to kick it off and then go and do the job and then come back. And now I'm going to talk about some important uh, concepts or important hints about the demand threads. So basically, whenever we write a program, the main program, right, the main class uh, is executed by main thread. So main thread will be always be there. So at least uh, any Java program will have at least one thread, which is main thread. So the main thread is always non demon What does it mean? So main thread, you cannot make it demo because main thread is cannot be uh, run from the main thread cannot be run at the background. It is always to be at the real time programming. It has to be run. So if you try to make the main thread as demo let's say if you say it, uh, if you check the main thread is demo it is going to turn false because main thread is not a demo thread. And then if you try to make it demo, let's say set demo of uh, true, it is going to throw error. I am going to show you that. And then all other threads, let's say you are creating more, uh, you know, custom defined threads in your program, right? So those threads actually inherits this particular property from its parent thread. In your program, uh, actually executed by the main thread. After that, you are writing a program where you are writing, uh, trying to create a new uh, thread class or uh, trying to create an object or instantiate uh, the thread class object, right? So that has been executed by main thread, isn't it? So in this case, this particular thread also gets the priority of this demo thread from main thread. So basically the thread which you are creating inside your main class is nothing but non demo thread. And if you want to make that particular thread as non demo thread to demo thread, that is possible by setting demo, set demo method. But you can do this only before you start that method. Because when you create a, a threads, uh, when you try to instantiate the thread, in, um, thread object, that time it will be in the new state isn't it but once you start it it will be ready for it is it is in the ready state or runnable state after that you cannot do anything so always it's uh, you can do only setting the demand uh, value before you kick off or before you start the thread again as i said earlier you can't change the main thread to demand because the main thread is always started by jvm so you don't have option to uh, you know uh, do anything in the main thread before the starting of the main thread that is why you cannot do it and then uh, let's say this one right uh, in the courier office, uh, let's say uh, you are getting uh, some urgency, like, uh, you know, some people are asking about some particular uh, courier parcel, right? So then what the courier manager will do is like, you know, that office manager will do is like, you know, ask that helper guys to uh, particularly look for that particular parcel and then get it done quickly. That is how the JVM actually performs here and then that will be uh, processed. Similarly, let's say uh, the, the manager, let's say, you know, uh, the helper guys are still searching for some order. And, but the, let's say the time is already up, let's say eight o'clock in the night and they want to close the office or shut down that office. So what they do is like uh, the manager says, you know, whatever you guys do, stop the work. I'm going to close shut down the office. Let's go to home. So in that case, what happens is whatever the uh, background uh, threads which are actually executing. So everything will be automatically shut down whenever the main thread or main, uh, the actual thread is actually getting shut down. So let's say you're writing a program and your program is executing, let's say for five minutes or 10 minutes. But after that, even the 10 minutes after that, if let's say some, uh, you know, background threads are still executing, it's not actually completing it. Then what happens is once your program completes, whatever the programs which are actually, uh, whatever the threads which are actually running in the background will get terminated automatically, will go to uh, dead state. So this is actually the beauty of, you know, the connection between the actual thread versus the demand threads. 
so if you guys think about the demonstrated concept it is very very simple to understand so i am going to write a simple program by having a main main class with a main thread and a child uh, ch you know child thread class basically i have uh, i will have a uh, 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 method to uh, run some job in the uh, child class uh, child thread and then i'm going to show you how the demon and non demon thread works internally let's get started hello guys here is the practical implementation to show you guys how the demand threads works in java so basically we have seen what is a demand thread and why do we need the demand threads in java now we are going to see practically how it is actually created in java so let's get started so what i did here is i just create one class which is called child thread which actually extends thread which means uh, what i'm trying to do here is i'm going to make this child thread class as a thread class right so which means i can able to create an object of this particular th class and then i can create a thread for this one i can instantiate a thread for this particular class and then i can able to start a thread right so what i'm doing in the main class is i have a class called main thread demo wherein i have a, a main method so as we know that every java class will have at least you know uh, one thread uh, whenever we have a main class when we have a main method inside it so there will the jvm automatically creates a thread called main thread which is responsible to execute this main method so now what i'm trying to do here is first of all i want to know whether this main thread which is going to execute here right is demo or not so i'm going to say thread dot current thread so basically thread class current thread is going to give the main thread and i'm going to check the boolean value if it is demo or not okay guys and then i'm going to create a yeah, i'm going to instantiate thread for this particular class child thread and then i'm going to see whether that is demon or not by default and then i'm going to set the value of demon to true for the child thread and then i'm going to see whether it is set to true or not so let me go and execute this program guys okay so now here you go so is the main thread is domain sorry demon right so the answer is false because you you always the main thread is false uh, main thread is non demon right and also when we create a new thread and when the thread is actually uh, before started is like you can see whether what is the demon value right it is false which means you know by default it is not a demon thread which means like actual thread which you created right you know program which is not like uh, the background uh, thread right so that is why it is giving false and now you are setting it value as ct dot set domain demon of true so here what we are trying to do is we are explicitly setting the value true which means we are setting we are making this particular thread as um, a demon right and after that it is set as true because that is the reason we are seeing the value as true so there are a couple of things i want to show you guys more on this so now i am trying to set the main thread as demon demon right so the way how i can do that is so thread dot current thread is going to return the main thread then i can say dot set of d minus true there is no compile time error if someone asks you whether if you try to make main thread as daemon whether you will get any error or not you can say there is no compile time error but when you run the program you will get an exception saying that you know java dot lang dot illegal thread state exception okay guys so just to uh, understand this concept they might be asking in your interview as well and also as we have seen before so any threads which we create by default it is not a daemon thread but if you want to make it it's still possible before you start the thread right so uh, this is all about like daemon threads in java it is very simple concept uh, where you have to just think about uh, the helper guys who is actually helping the courier um, uh, people in the courier office basically the daemon threads are the background threads which are actually helping the actual uh, threads which we are creating in our actual program the typical example is a garbage collector which is actually helping the jvm to check if any objects are unused so that it will go and uh, kill those objects so uh, i would like to go through this video once again uh, in your eclipse and try to see the code and let me know guys uh, if you have any more questions or any comments on this particular video thank you guys bye bye I hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section and I will be more than happy to assist keep watching all our videos there are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys